Hey everybody, what's up? This is Bad Out of Brooklyn, and today I am here to finally tell you about my accent. I'm gonna walk through what happened, I'm gonna walk through the gear I had on, um, what I, now looking back, um, would have done differently, um, and what like this means for me moving forward as a rider. So let's get started. Let's uh, let's dive into let's dive into the story. <laughs> so I actually just finished filming my Carter review. It was a beautiful day. It was the perfect riding day. Um, beautiful fall weather. The sun was not burning my eyes. It was like overcast. It was. Um, not windy, perfect temperature, all around, beautiful scenario, best riding day. Um, Luis and I went to have lunch, and we were having a great time, and then um, we decided to head home, so we were on Long Island. And um, on our way home, we merged onto the Cross Island Parkway. Um, and I don't know who the genius is that created... Um, these stupid on-ramps that share a lane with an exit ramp within like a quarter mile span. Um, but whoever that genius is, thank you. Because I think um, that is why this whole accident took place to begin with. Um, so we were merging onto the Cross Island Parkway, heading back to the city. So we were actively accelerating to pick up speed to get onto the highway. I think some asshole, who does, they don't know they're an asshole, but some asshole, multiple cars up, realized, oh shit, I'm going to miss my exit. And even though we have Google and all this stupid technology these days that can just reroute you, probably off the next exit, um... They just decided they're gonna cut everyone off and I think they forced themselves into this lane to make their exit um, which caused a chain reaction of people slamming on their brakes um, and the person in front of me stopped short now I was not tailgating this person I can promise you Luis is there was there he could vouch for me um, Luis argues that I'm can argue that I'm actually like maybe an overly cautious rider since it's my first riding season and I'm so new to it. Um, I'm really cautious, I don't really take risks. I gave space between myself and the car in front of me. But since they slammed on their brakes and I was actively accelerating to get on the highway, it closed that gap between us very quickly. Um, I tried to stop, realized I was not going to be able to stop without hitting this car. Um, so when I tried to maneuver, my brakes locked up. I didn't really have many options as to where I could go during this scenario either. If I would have went to the left, I would have went into like actual highway speed traffic. I would have went into an active highway lane um, blindly. Um, I personally didn't have the skill level to lane split or ride the line at this point in time and even if I did, since everyone was stopping short, there it would have been a risk because there's no way of knowing if somebody would have shot out to the left to avoid the person in front of them anyway. Um, and then to the right, there wasn't a shoulder. There was a guardrail and there was a little bit of space between the car in front of me and the guardrail. So I saw my only option going to the right. So I tried to maneuver to the right. My front brakes locked up, forcing my handlebars to like turn in this weird way. Um, my bike went sideways and it kicked me off the bike. So I was thrown off the bike onto the highway. Um, and I don't, I don't remember what happened after I was, I guess even started to get thrown off the bike. <laughs> Cause my last thoughts were I'm dropping the bike. Like I felt the bike turn and I felt the bike starting to fall back. So I thought, all right, I'm dropping the bike. I'm getting ready to slide. Um, but as soon as I felt that, everything went black. And the only other image that I remember 
is a split second view or visual in my head of like my hands stretched out in front of me, my legs stretched out in front of me, and the bike in the distance. Like I, I recognized like I was in the air and then it went black again. So then this is where Luis comes in to fill in the story. Unfortunately, Luis had to watch everything, but thankfully he was there because um, he was able to help me. Thankfully, the cars behind us stopped. Oh my God, I could have been hit by a car. It, yeah, Luis saw what happened. So he said, I flew off the bike. Um, I flew a couple feet. I landed on my right shoulder first and my face hit the ground. Um, and then I bounced back onto the back of my left hip and the left side of my head whipped back, hit the ground, and then I f um, bounced onto my stomach and that's where I stopped. And um, I was knocked out face, face down on, um, on the road. I was out for, for a few moments because um, when Luis came to check on me, I wasn't responding. Um, he said when I came to, I still don't have any memory of when I first came to. I was um, panicking, I was trying to get up, and I couldn't see. Um, I was complaining that I couldn't see out of my left eye. And when I have memory coming to, it was when um, the fire department and um, the EMTs was already there. So I came to when they were putting a brace around my neck, and I remember saying, um, I can't see on my left eye, I can't see on my left eye, and there was a blurry, like a huge blurry streak with like a blob in the middle in my left eye, um, which apparently is very common for a concussion. Um, so I'm fine. <laughs> um, I was taken away in an ambulance. Um, I had a CAT scan. I was treated for a concussion. And luckily all I suffered was a concussion and some bruises. Um, so I was very lucky. I, I walked away with very, very, very minor injuries. And why is that? It's because I, I never ride unless I'm fully geared. So I want to go over the, the gear I was wearing and talk about um, how I think it helped me, talk about what I would like to change um, when I replace my gear, if anything, and how my bike was situated and how I think that helped me. Um, so first thing first, I had to crash bar my bike. I uh, was hoping it saved my bike. Unfortunately, my bike was deemed totaled, so I lost my sweet Dahlia. Um, it was not because of engine damage, though. It's just because she was a sportster. Um, the value of the bike really isn't that high to begin with, so the damages, of course, um, totaled higher than the bike. However, most of the damage was to the handlebars. Um, a couple dents in the tank. There apparently was some exhaust damage, some other miscellaneous things, but the engine ultimately was saved, so the crash bar did its job. Other thing the crash bar did was keep the bike from sliding. Um, I am so grateful that crash bar caught the bike and ultimately stopped it from hitting me, so I did not need to worry about getting hit by a 500 plus pound motorcycle. So thankful for that. Um, when it comes to my personal gear, um, I always wear a jacket, I wear Kevlar pants, and I wear a helmet, and I wear gloves, and of course I wear leather boots. My boots were unaffected, but I wear, I wear Doc Martens in um, the thick patent leather, in case you're wondering. Link it below. Um, I wear Oxford super leggings, they're Kevlar leggings, I got them on Revzilla, also link them below. Um, they were unaffected as well. Um, most of the damage or impact was taken by my leather jacket and my helmet. I have a Milwaukee leather jacket. I love this jacket. It is thick leather. Um, I will, I don't know exactly how thick it is. I'll, I'll put it below. Um, but it is a true motorcycle jacket. Um, it held up well, even though I didn't technically slide. Um, the impact of my initial shoulder, there's just some scuffs on the shoulder and ultimately some scuffs along the back. Ultimately, the jacket held up great. Um, so I'm gonna get the same exact jacket again, hands down. Highly recommend, love that jacket. Also, it just like looks so cute, just saying. Uh, 
For my helmet, I have the Biltwell Lane Splitter. Um, I love this helmet. I am forever grateful to Biltwell um, because it saved my head. It did its job. My head hit the ground. My head is okay. <laughs> um, I, especially after this incident, will never, ever not wear a full face helmet. Um, it saved my face. The initial impact from my accident was on my cheek along the jawline, so saved my freaking face. Um, and saved the back of my head. So based on like where the damage is on this helmet, I will never wear a brain bucket. Like I don't know why anyone would wear a half helmet. It's to each their own, wear a half helmet if you want. But all of the damage was at the base of my helmet. If I would have had a half helmet on, it would have hit the edge of the helmet, probably shifted it up on my head, and my dome would have been on the asphalt. Um, so I would, I would never wear half helmet. Um, and I, I, I also love my face. So there's that. Um, so full face helmet all the way. Thank you, Bill. However, I think. Um, with this incredible helmet, love this helmet. It is very much like a baseline helmet. Um, I think with this incident, this accident that occurred, I'm gonna take this opportunity to upgrade my helmet itself. Um, and I think I'm gonna go for a higher tier helmet um, just because it was such an eye-opening experience for me. Um, I want to invest in my, in my brain. I'm gonna invest in my head. I think it's pretty important, so that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, what I would have done differently, if there is anything at all. Um, I honestly feel there really isn't too much more that I personally could have done differently at my current skill level as a rider on that bike, my 2012 Iron 883. Looking back, probably would have tried to ride the line to the left. However, that would have been a risky move, so I'm not really sure how that would have panned out for me, but it probably would have been um, the leap of faith that I would have gone for or tried um, if I would have had more confidence to accomplish that. Um, I mean, again, I was giving them so much room, and to prove that I was giving them so much room, um, after I tried to stop, flew off the bike a couple feet. Um, oh, here's my dog. Oh, there she is, hello, hi. <laughs> um, after I tried to stop and flew off my bike a couple feet, there was still at least five feet between my, um, my body and the car in front of me. <laughs> um, so I was not tailgating them, I was not following them too closely. Um, but yeah, I mean, I guess there's never, there's never too much room, right? So I could have given them a little more space. But ultimately what I can do now, looking back is, well, not even looking back, but moving forward is really just prepare myself for safer riding. Um, I'm going to be looking for a bike that has the features that my last bike lacked that I think really would have helped me in this situation. And I'm also going to be looking for a more advanced motorcycle safety course. Um, I took a course when I first started riding um, to get my license but I think I wanna take a more advanced maneuver course so I could figure out how to handle situations like this. Um, hopefully it doesn't happen again, but as you know, as a rider, um, every time you get on a bike, you understand the risk you're taking and that risk is always there. And you are responsible for yourself. You know what you are doing or what you're capable of um, or what moves you're going to make, but ultimately you have no idea what other riders are gonna do and you, you can't control what happens, you know? Um, and honestly, if, if the road's gonna claim you, she's gonna claim you. If she's coming for you, she's gonna take you. Figured that out. Um, but yeah, I don't really think there was like too much I could have done in that particular situation at my current riding level. But the only way I'm going to get better and be able to handle these situations better moving forward is to continue riding, continue improving my skill set, and providing myself with the tools necessary um, so this situation doesn't happen again.
that's really the story. As you know, I said my bike was totaled, so I am currently looking for a new motorcycle. Um, I think I am going to save the details of what I'm looking for um, in that specific motorcycle for another video. I think I'm going to go into more detail about um, the type of bike I want, the features I want that bike to have, um, and I'm going to go on a couple test rides, but I think I know what I want. I'm like... 99.9% .9 sure I know what I want. I think I'm also going to make another video um, discussing the new helmet I get. I, uh, I know exactly what I'm gonna get. I'm pretty excited about it. I think I'm gonna make a review and talk about the fit and the features um, and hopefully it'll help you on your helmet search as well. Um, but that was my story. Um, I am fine. I am going to get back on a motorcycle. I am so excited. I cannot wait to do so. Um, I think it is terrifying that I lost like minutes of my life that I have zero memory of. However, I'm really grateful at the same time that I don't remember those moments because I think that's a saving grace as to why I have no fear to get back on a motorcycle. Um, and it would be such a shame to um, have stopped so soon into this journey of motorcycle riding, right? Like I just started this season. It would be a shame to to stop literally within one. So I'm super excited to get back on the motorcycle and um, share my journeys with you. I think, I think we're gonna have a really good time. So if you want to continue following this story, um, please subscribe. If you like this video, please like and comment below. Talk to me about the gear that you guys have um, and any experiences, close calls. Oh my gosh, like, it's not, not like I would love to hear about them, but like, we gotta stick together. <laughs> um, but yeah, thanks for tuning in. Until next time, raise hell. See ya. Oh, it's a baby. <laughs> this is my balling.